Men's greatest fear is that women will laugh at them. And women's greatest fear, of course, is that a toad will kidnap them in the middle of the night and try to force them to marry their son. We're talking Thumbelina today on... Fucked Up Fairy Tales with Liz. Once upon a time, there was an old lady who desperately wanted a child. But she was single. And if you were single and wanted a child in fairy tales, well, there were a few different directions you could go. You could ask the fairies for help. You could cry out to the universe that you desperately wanted a child as white as snow and red as blood. Or you could hope that someone would literally drop one into your lap. It's happened. The old woman opted to go the route of fairy help. All right, my dear, here's how you make a baby. I've left you a barley corn, plant it in a pot, it will grow into a tulip, and that will birth your child. And trust me, that's much preferable to the mortal way of doing things. It is a goddamn shame what passes for sex education in some parts of this world. The woman planted the barley corn as instructed, and almost immediately a tulip grew from the seed. And it was so pretty, the woman couldn't help but kiss it. And when she did, the bud peeled open, and inside stood a lovely little maiden who stood no higher than your thumb. Hi, I'm your fully grown daughter! Mother named the girl Thumbelina, and she wasted no time setting her daughter up with a fantastic mini estate. I'm talking a polished walnut bed, and I mean a literal walnut shell. A plate tricked out into a little pond that Thumbelina could row around in a little tulip petal boat? I mean, could you even? And Thumbelina, or Tiny, as she was sometimes called, would just row the day away without a fucking care. But despite the fact that Thumbelina was very much living that indoor cat life, the outdoors was about to find her. One night, a mama toad hopped in the open window and took a shine to the girl. This little lady will be the perfect wife for my son. She scooped up Thumbelina asleep in that walnut shell and hopped her out the window back to her home. Sonny boy, check out this gorgeous dame I kidnapped for you. Croak, croak. All right, you have to let me do all the talking or she's going to get scared and run away. Oh, I know. I'll set her on a lily pad in the middle of the pond so she has nowhere to go. When Thumbelina woke up stranded in the middle of a lake, she was terrified. And meeting the toads did nothing to calm her nerves. Morning, sunshine. Meet your future husband. Roke. Um, if that was a proposal, I politely decline. Oh, get over it so he's not so smart. You're going to get a house with a water view in the deal. Think it over. I'm sure you'll be more agreeable by morning. Luckily for Thumbelina, the local fish saw the whole thing and they took pity on her. Okay, y'all. We gotta arrange a prison break for this poor girl and fast. Fish Avengers! Assemble. Working together, they chewed through the stock holding Thumbelina's lily pad and sent her downstream. On that delightful lily pad cruise, a butterfly perched on the lily pad. So Thumbelina had the idea to lasso the butterfly to the lily pad for some extra horsepower. Well, bug power. Yes, you heard that right. Without asking the butterfly's permission, Thumbelina really turned him into her own personal set of water skis. But before she could have too much fun, Thumbelina's water sports were about to be interrupted by a second kidnapping. This time, it was a huge beetle who scooped the girl up. He flew her away, leaving the butterfly attached to the lily pad. Oh no! Please, Mr. Beetle, let me free the butterfly from where I tied him down. He could starve! Maybe you should have thought of that before you decided to make a living thing into a jet ski. And brought her up to a nearby tree. The beetle offered Thumbelina some honeysuckle juice, and he was quite thrilled with his acquisition. But the other beetles were not impressed. Really? You like this thing? This bitch is ugly as fuck. She has no antenna. She only has four legs. And she is far too skinny. Don't skinny shame me! Oh please, that is not a thing. You know what, everyone? You have convinced me. She is ugly. The beetle dropped her on a daisy and flew off. 
Well, I don't want you anymore. Get the fuck out. Wow, if a beetle thinks I'm ugly, I must be the ugliest thing on earth. I heard that. Here at last, Thumbelina got to enjoy that single girl living. She was a little lady in the big woods. She'd help herself to dew drops to stay hydrated. She weaved herself hammocks out of blades of grass. She sheltered under the beautiful leaves. And this worked out nicely for most of the year, until winter came. Suddenly, all of Thumbelina's protective plant life was shriveling and dying out. Her bird friends were flying south for the winter. And then the snow started. And each snowflake was like getting pummeled by a shovel full of snow. Oh no! Thumbelina staggered through the cold wood, clinging to life and getting torn to shreds by the dry earth. At last she came to the door of a field mouse. She peered inside and she could see the warmth, the stores of food, the swanky furnishings. So she banged on the field mouse's door. You poor thing, you come right in and warm yourself. The field mouse adored Thumbelina and she invited her to stay as long as she liked. In exchange, she asked for Thumbelina's help around the house, as well as some storytelling, and Thumbelina was happy to help. The two got along this way for about a week. Just a couple of ladies helping each other out, doing it our way, until the field mouse utterly betrayed her roommate. So, we are having a guest for dinner tonight. Oh, how lovely! Who? Once a week, my neighbor visits. He is extremely well off. He has a huge house. And he's an impeccable dresser. Wouldn't someone like that be the perfect husband for you? Well, I haven't had a lot of luck with matchmaking, to be honest. Nonsense! You and Mr. Mole would be perfect for each other. A mole? He has the means to take care of you, and you can take care of him. Now, it was true that the mole was quite rich, and he wore a beautiful velvet coat. But for one thing, the European mole is like five inches long, and Thumbelina is not even this big, so that is fucking terrifying. But the real problem was, the mole had a terrible personality. I can't wait for spring to arrive. I'm desperate for sunshine and flowers. Overrated. The sun and the flowers are overrated? Absolutely. Who needs flowers when you have tunnels? You know, you and Ms. Mouse are welcome to take a tour of my tunnels anytime you like. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. They're pretty much the best place to be, other than that friggin' dead bird. What? Eh, don't worry about him. He's a swallow who froze to death like an idiot. Just shove his body aside. That is very disrespectful. Thumbelina and the mouse began taking daily walks with the mole through his tunnels. But Thumbelina couldn't bear the sight of the poor dead swallow. See, look at him, the friggin' idiot. Birds are the worst. Always belting out some dumb tune and dying in the winter because they're cold. It's true. You are so clever, Mr. Mole. Thumbelina began tending to the swallow when her two furry friends weren't paying attention. She covered him with down and lay her head on his heart to wish him goodbye. And it was then that she heard the soft thump thump of the swallow's heart. Land's sake! He's alive! Now the girl was a little nervous that if she revived the bird, she would then become bird food. But I expect she was feeling a little guilty about that whole manslaughter of the butterfly thing. Well, bug slaughter. So she began piling more leaves on the swallow to warm him up. And soon he did regain consciousness, and he was restored to his full strength under Thumbelina's care. Thank you so much, my dear. I was unable to make it south this year due to a wing injury. Well, you just take your time getting stronger. I'll care for you. For the rest of the winter, Thumbelina and the swallow carried on an emotional affair behind the mole and mouse's backs. But when spring had warmed the earth, the swallow was ready to leave. Won't you come with me, my Thumbelina? I would love to, but I cannot. 
you really can, though. And you should. I can't bear to leave Mrs. Mouse behind. Suit yourself, sweetie. Thumbelina soon regretted this choice, because the mole officially asked the mouse for permission to wed Thumbelina. The field mouse went full mother of the bride. She hired four spiders to create Thumbelina's wedding gown. That is some serious haute couture. Well, bug couture. Now, Thumbelina was able to buy some time because the mole wanted a fall wedding. And I'm a New England girl, I cannot blame him there. So every day that summer, Thumbelina would go to the surface and she would strain her eyes in the sunny sky for sight of her swallow friend. I changed my mind. Hello? Swallow? But there was no sign of the guy. Or maybe he couldn't see Thumbelina hidden under all the big corn stalks that summer. So when fall arrived, Thumbelina had to face the music. And music, interestingly, was another thing that the mole didn't give a fuck about. I am just gonna say it. Mouse Mother, I cannot marry that mole. How dare you say such a thing, Thumbelina? A woman cannot do better than Mr. Mole. You'll live like a queen. If you're so gaga for the guy, why don't you marry him? You think I wouldn't if I could? He won't have me, a common old mouse. Now shut up and let me live vicariously through you. If you keep protesting, I'll bite you. Whoa! The wedding day arrived, and the spiders dressed Thumbelina in her delicate, and let's face it, probably sticky wedding dress. And for her bachelorette, the girl was allowed to go to the surface one last time. Goodbye, son. Goodbye. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, Grover's Corners. Hey, Thumbelina! Long time no see! Oh, thank the Lord! Swallow, they're making me marry the mole. Ugh! I'm headed to the Mediterranean. You want in? Yes! Take me away from this grave! Thumbelina grasped the swallow's feathers, and he flew her away. Past the forest, across the seas, over the mountains. And at last to his home in the warmer part of the world which overlooked a beautiful blue lake and remnants of an old marble castle. All right, I've got a nest, but I'm thinking that you should pick out a townhouse and one of those flowers. How'd you like to live in a flower? It would be like returning to the womb. I pick that one. The swallow flew her down to a large white blossom that grew between two of the broken pillars of the castle. To the girl's surprise, the flower was already inhabited by a tiny, handsome, crystal fairy king. Fuck, I'm about to be swallowed by a swallow. No, no, the swallow is my friend. Well, hello there, pretty lady. I didn't realize this house had another occupant. Every flower does. And I am the king of the flower children. Groovy! You are the finest young lady I have ever met. And I love how you just crashed into my place with no warning. You're feisty, and I dig it. You want to get hitched? You want to be my queen, baby? Well, I'm already wearing a bridal gown. Let's do it! The rest of the flowers opened, and the winged flower people assembled for the grandest wedding of the century. Each brought a gift for their new fairy queen. But Thumbelina's favorite gift was the pair of wings the fairies fashioned for her. Oh, they're beautiful. Where are they from? We ripped them off a dead fly. You're telling me you ripped those wings off the corpse of a bug that spends its time in literal shit and you put them on my Thumbelina? I love them. So what's your name? We must know our new queen's name. Thumbelina. Yikes. We can't have a queen named after a thumb. The ugliest finger? Are you kidding me? We're giving you a new name, girl. How about Maya? You could just call me Lena or something. No, it's Maya. You're Maya now. The swallow sang a wedding ballad for the couple. But it was bittersweet for him. He would have loved to stick around and be Thumbelina's Maya. Um, Maya's bestie for all time. But he missed his home in Denmark. 
Later that year, he flew back to his northern nest, which just happened to be outside the window of a famous children's writer. Who could that be? Hans, you'll never believe the winter I had. Let me tell you all about it. I met the most remarkable little girl. The end. Thank you so much for watching Thumbelina. If you are new to my fairy tales, you can find me over at TikTok where I have done a lot of them. I am trying to catch up here and post some of the older tales, and I'm going to try to post some special content just for you guys too as my audience picks up. If you really like my work, you can support me on Patreon or send me a tip. Hell, you can follow me all over the place at the same handle, at Cosbrarian. And be sure to tune in next time for some more fucked up fairy tales. Fucked up fairy tales with Liz. Fucked up fairy tales with Liz.